Welcome to our sixth episode. Congrats, Britt. We're yeah. at number six. Congrats. We're almost, we're more than halfway through our season. <sighs> That's crazy. That is crazy. Thanks for listening, everybody. We are loving all the feedback we're getting. We would actually want to hear a little bit more. Yeah, come on. Tell us the truth. Chat with us. Like, we'd love to hear your stories, anything that you want to share. It's so awesome to hear that others can relate to what we're talking about, especially uh, dancers in the NBA and people who reached out to us. So anybody who has who's an aspiring cheerleader that wants to ask questions, we're happy to take those on during cheer chat. And uh, we can keep things anonymous, right? Yeah, let's do it. We can mask names and disguise voices with some cool editing yeah. <laughs> that we don't know how to do yet. But yeah, we're hoping to get a hotline, right? Yeah. So you can leave a voicemail. Right. And we'll display your stories for all of our listeners. Scary. Yeah. But fun. We want to create a community. That was one of the things that we really had hoped for with launching the podcast is just everybody sharing their experiences. Because we have a lot of stories between the two of us. But just think if we can share appearances from hell from people from all over. We yes. know you've got those stories, ladies and We're gents. getting a lot of those comments where people are like, oh my gosh, tell a story about when we dance together or this is so relatable like we have some activity from like wizards girls yes. the nba and um i think like the rosebuds awesome. in oregon they awesome. they dance for the hockey team down there so yeah thanks for definitely more 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 yes we want more thanks for joining us and for a sixth tr- episode called yes. new rules new rules so I'm kind of, I mean, I, would, I didn't love the song, but the Dua Lipa, what's her, mm-hmm. is that her name? How you yeah. say it? But it, it was, was pretty popular. When was that? Like this summer? Yeah. It was sassy. We danced to it in an exercise class and it was all about like, one, don't do this and do and that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Very sassy. So this is our new rules episode. And yeah, yeah we're going to be going over some of the crazy rules that we have in our world. I mean, some of the ones that like caught some headlines and. You know, we're also going to write our own rules at the end for Locker Talk. But first, some cheer chat, right? Yes. So we've been celebrating Makiba's birthday for like two weeks. It was on the 5th. <laughs> just yes, yes. There's no end to celebrating my life. No, I'm just kidding. But... Yeah, so a group of us went to Big Frida, oh, which Makiba had never heard of Big Frida. I what mean, did you I think? Was, I was, I'd heard of her only in the context of like Beyonce giving shout outs, Drake giving shout outs, but I actually had not. I felt really stupid to not know that this was it's the originator of... It's pretty underground, I would say. It's a pretty small, niche group. Yeah. But the booty... What's it called? The Nola Bounce? Yeah, and all Nola this, Bounce. I've never seen twerking on this level in my life. I um, I feel like my back and my butt are broken in comparison <laughs> to the shaking that I saw. So fun, though, man. Yeah. I love the show. It was great. We were great. smiling. So if you don't know Big Frida, I highly recommend you check her out. She is awesome. And her whole crew, like, I've seen her three times in Seattle now. So Gosh. it was really fun. She changed it up this last time, but it was really fun. The dancing was incredible. Mm-hmm. And she even had, like, a twerk-off dance contest on stage. We were too far in the back or else we would try, right? Wouldn't you? Or were you scared? Um, no. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think I would have gotten up there. I would have definitely smelled way too much booty crack going on. There was some, we saw some sights, right? Yeah, I mean, it was fun. And we saw somebody that you know more so than me, but yes. social media, you know, yes. you know everybody supposedly. Coach, he's one of the premier choreographers in the Seattle area. I don't know if he listens to our podcast. He should he, be. He killed it. He, he did. Was, he was on stage. He was kind just, of a sleeper cell, like kind of standing to the side. Yeah. And then he gave, uh, Big Frida gave everybody um, like a moment to shine. And then his was the best. It was like, pretty good. headstand, twerking, All leg shaking. It was so cool. So much fun. Thank, it was fun. Thank yeah, you, Andrew. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. So we kind of touched on this, but we're mm-hmm. really trying to collect stories. Yes. So just want to reiterate that it'll be anonymous. And yes. we want to hear your stories. You can either send them to us on our Facebook, which is now live. Yes. Facebook.com slash Pro Cheerleading Podcast. Um, please like our page. Join the community. Post away. 
send us messages. And then you can even email us to our pro cheerleading podcast, podcast at gmail.com. Correct. Send us your novels. We'll scan through them and read. Yes. Um, send in your crazy fan mail even if you yes. want to. Oh my gosh. We're we're down for all stories. We could do that one episode because mm-hmm. I have some, I kept all my fan mail. So just, I don't know if there's any that are really that crazy. The tape one kind of takes the cake, yeah. right? Unless we're playing that on the air. I don't know that any of your other fan mail will do <laughs> <laughs> it justice. <laughs> Um, where else can they send it? Yeah, um, I help run our Twitter account, mm-hmm. so it's Pro Cheer Podcast, and your handle on Instagram is Pro Cheerleading Podcast. But whatever way you guys want to reach out, we're definitely excited to hear from you. Yeah, and we honestly thought when we saw the news, I'm sure you all have seen it, we're a little delayed with when we launch our episodes. But um, the 49er cheerleader Kayla Morris, who kneeled during the national except our friend request i requested her on instagram and i I think she totally blew up after all of this so well hopefully she's not getting death threats i mean we're seeing all kinds of craziness nowadays on the internet but uh her her page is still up on the roster so it looks like a lot of people reached out asking do you think that she got fired and um i mentioned that the 49ers owner was one of the few owners that was supportive of the guys kneeling so i would hope that they would treat her with the same level of respect and uh very curious to hear her story. It seemed like she's been pretty tight-lipped. We didn't hear, see anything about her kneeling again this week, but I figured it would start a ripple effect across the games, and like we would see whole teams kneeling, more girls. I'm sure. I'm I would surprised. imagine the opposite. Like really, okay, just now we all we're really tightening it up. I could see it. That's a little unfortunate. I think. Yeah, that's my guess. I could see that being part of like a team meeting about. I'm sure you have all heard about mm-hmm. this cheerleader who kneeled and. We, you know, maybe just something that says we respect you, but just don't do it. Or if we do something, we need to all do it, and we're not doing that. So yeah. let's just stay out of it. I could see yeah, everyone wanting to avoid controversy. Um, but cheers to her to absolutely doing what she felt in the moment. And we might as well say it. I mean, I thought about her decision to kneel and the timing of it all, but I still haven't seen the movie, but... Um, What's it called? Oh my goodness, my mind just went blank. It's based on a book. Yes. The Hate You Give. Oh, right, right, right. So sorry. I've seen commercials for it. I have yet to see it myself. Those, I mean, it's taking on the issue of a police shooting in Chicago uh, based on a book, but clearly this is part of real life. But um, I was wondering, I wonder what influenced her to, to do it and the timing. But, you know, that movie was pretty powerful. My son went to see it, and I could just... I could see it resonating emotions all over again Mm -hmm. on this topic, so not sure what um, Kayla's story is, but... Hopefully it comes out sooner rather than later, because I'm really curious, because such a simple move, just going to one knee and, like, the impact it had, Mm -hmm. a lot of props to Kayla, Yeah, for sure. And from what I saw when I was snooping around on Twitter, there were a lot of people who were supportive of her, I would say more so than than criticizing her for her protest, so... Shout out to Kayla. Yeah. And don't be stuck up except our friend request. I know. Come on, Kayla. <laughs> Are we ready to just yeah, get... Yeah, kind of along those lines. Yeah. I wonder if they have some new rules now within their team. I know. On this specific issue. Yeah. Well, hopefully they consulted their legal counsel before they did it. <laughs> yeah. Saying, just, you know, be consistent with how you're dealing with it. Because I have the 2014 contract that we signed that outlines all of our rules that we sit down and look over as a team at orientation, which is usually your first thing that you do once the team has been officially made. Yeah. Um, And in there, it does not say anything about personal protests, not doing them, doing them. What does it say? It says stay stay away from topics like religion and political views, but... um, I don't know if that's even in there, but that was kind so. of something that was encouraged. Like, obviously, don't yeah. go to a promo and start talking about politics. It's not really Debating the place. fans. And, right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we might as well launch into it. Like right, you said, with new rules, we're going to go through the rules of different organizations, including our own, which may have changed since we both danced. But, but like you said, we should just kind of set the framework for it, right? Because you just made the team, and this is your team orientation and you are given the rules, which are several pages long. It's essentially a contract. Not a lot of the teams have them posted anymore, right? Because of all the lawsuits, everybody mm-hmm. kind of ripped them off their websites. But um, 
So this is the first time that you're hearing about what's expected of you and what you're supposed to do and not do. I kind of hated orientation. You did? And I did it for six years. So you would think, oh, like it's super easy. Mm -hmm. But for us, we had to go around the room, stand up. This was like the one and only time you, for some reason, you had to reveal your age. So Uh, everybody was going around, say your name, your age, how many years, and then like what, what What you you do do. for a living. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think each year, like the wild card was different but it I hated it you yeah. had to stand up I just felt so nervous more nervous in auditions really? yeah oh it was more relaxed I was more excited I guess to mm-hmm. meet the squad mates officially and figure out like who people are and you know my last few years I was like oh great I'm the oldest one on the team thanks <laughs> <laughs> and you're 19 half my age great <laughs> um but no I was more excited to hear about um you know where people worked because we don't get to unless you've watched auditions back by the time you have orientation because there's a live webcast you don't really know very much about your teammates yet mm-hmm. so I kind of looked at it as an exciting time to figure out who is who and who see. drove from where some people are like right, oh, I'm, I'm from Spokane right. I'm driving back and forth until I get settled here exactly and it's crazy some but this, states away sometimes right but this yeah. is the first time that you're having like an in-depth discussion about the rules and uh you know, similar to your any other place of employment, right? When you're hired, you have your mandatory orientation, and it might be an employee handbook or, you know, rules of the road, so to speak. And it's very similar in nature. Yeah, it sets the stage for the rest of the season, right? So right. you go, you, not like it refrains you from, but you're kind of expected, like, none of these rules should be broken then. I told you the first day of the job yep. what you should and shouldn't be doing. Yep. They definitely go in depth. It's usually our director and an assistant of some kind, whether that's the choreographer. Um, but giving examples, there's a lot of hand raising, like, does anyone have an example of when this happened? <laughs> and so right. we'd be there for a long time. Yeah, that's usually like probably the longest team meeting for sure. Unless somebody interrupts to go watch a movie premiere. Oh, that happened one year. You that should tell that so story. That was odd. so random. So odd. So this is a year... I think after we won the Super Bowl and this is a you know we're all in business attire it's our business meeting everybody's usually cleared out of VMAC by then but uh, Russell Wilson was in the Entourage movie and <laughs> they I think they had a screening <laughs> earlier in the day so I don't even know why they he, did it again he, exactly but um, here he comes walking into our our conference room a few gasps like <gasps> yeah it was just kind of like what is happening he right introduced now? himself yeah he's he like, like hey y'all i'm russell wilson he licked his lips and said yeah come <laughs> on downstairs and or do you guys want to like watch my movie premiere and i think i'd heard about him being in the movie but i was just kind of like is this your movie but okay but <laughs> but everybody was looking to our director like what do we do are we actually going to go see you know are we really going to interrupt this long behind orientation meeting to go down and watch the movie but she said as long as we were fine with re- you know, resuming the meeting after the movie, then great. And then we were down there watching Entourage. and It was very inappropriate. And I think <laughs> the director was right behind me and there was like a sex scene to kick it <laughs> off. I was like blushing. But yeah, that was a very, very, it was, that was the year I say that we went Hollywood a little bit. But yeah, um, but yeah usually it was just it's really weird. That's was, never happened since and before, I doubt. No, no. Very, very odd. But usually it's taken very seriously and we do not have it interrupted by... (laughs) To go watch a movie. With sex scenes. Yeah. With your director. Um, But, yes. So like you said, you know what you're supposedly signing up for, but you don't really get... They had popcorn at the premiere, remember? We'll get into that, but did we get any popcorn? I didn't try to eat any. (laughs) I didn't get up, help myself, (laughs) scoop myself a big old bag. Oh my gosh. Okay, so sorry. Back to orientation, (laughs) what it's usually like. Yes. It's very Very professional. and professional. Sets the tone for the rest of the season. And, you know, to the extent people have commented, like, these ladies, when we're complaining about the rules or there's news articles about the rules, people often say, like, you know what you're signing up for, like, you know what you're getting into, why would you do it if you can't agree to the rules? And... I take that, like, I agree to that. Yeah. Because it is made very clear. It's not like, oh, we'll just let you fumble along, and if you make a mistake, we'll correct you along the way. It's very black and white. Yeah. So Agreed. I just think, you know, just similar to any other job, if you hear about the rules, it's not that you're going to raise your hand if you think a rule is unfair and say, can we change that for me? Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't really think this rule is clear or... You know, does this also apply? Number really hot, so can I just date him? <laughs> or does this apply to the guys too? Like, you know, you really shut up and accept the rules of the program, and 
and sign your life away mm-hmm. that night because you have to actually sign the contract that agrees to complying with the rules and and that's all you she wrote right and you're basically signing that if i break any of the rules they have the right and the discretion to mm-hmm. eliminate me from the team yeah so it's understood right supposedly Let's get into the rules <laughs> that everybody broke <laughs> exactly hmm. <laughs> well there are certain rules that were more like you know somewhat like finishing school of Rules of etiquette that you would think people would just know. Common sense. Common things. sense, but you're actually having to spell out. And remember that some of these women are 18 years old. It's their first real job. You know, maybe they haven't been around executives before or celebrities, fans, celebrities, assume, yeah. athletes, fans. So you're actually having to tell them how to conduct themselves and and how to behave. So, or like you know how to behave at promos even. So some of those rules are covered, which they're not controversial, but some examples would be what? like Walking up, if you're at a promo, you have to walk up to the main contact. Um, we mm-hmm. would be contracted out to do multiple and a variety of promos. So they weren't always under the same person under the Seahawks or right. what am I trying to say here? Well, Basically, there's, yeah, there'd often be, you know, a it could be a business for all we know. It's right. not necessarily a Seahawks run promotion, um, a promotional appearance. So you might have to seek out the person who... There you go. See? Yes. <laughs> Miss Attorney, say what I oh want to say. Gosh. No, but you might have to seek out the person who is listed as the contact so that you know what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And, and just that level of interaction on a professional in a professional manner. Right. Um, so that you're not just feel like, I'm here. Or, you know, like you have to be assertive and professional and introduce yourself. How can yourself. we get to work kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's a shame that you have to kind of say certain things, but. Well, there was a tendency, unfortunately, I'm not trying to like pinpoint because I'm a millennial too, I guess, but mm-hmm. there's a tendency to like be on your phone or walk in with like a Starbucks, like, okay, what do I need to do? You know, yeah. just yeah. kind of like a weird, unprofessional attitude. So that was really drilled in to like try to be as professional as you can. Right. Don't right. be distracted with other things and um, introduce yourself, right? That's right. pretty basic. That's We're warming ba- up, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so this is It gets just, juicier. Yeah. <laughs> it gets juicier. Um, but yeah, and also like things like no chewing gum, right. you know, like... There was plenty of times, like we've stated before, that we're traveling... And mm-hmm. there's been plenty of times where you're in an airplane, so people chew gum to pop their ears. But if that was noticed, it was like, please spit out your gum oh right now. Gosh. Oh, like, ah, that oh. sounds so like. I mean, we're going to get into that, but I remember we were waiting at the airport um, and I had my legs crossed. And I have a tattoo on my foot that I nobody really even knows about because mm-hmm. it's on my foot, but it's hidden for the most part. And um, we also have to travel in the same attire. So you're not just wearing whatever you want, but right. we're wearing these navy business suits um, <laughs> that I have a name for them. Um, I just feel like I look like a basketball coach, okay? It's, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm like taller. I just, I look like a basketball player. And um, <laughs> you have to wear high heels too, right? You're never yeah. traveling in flats. Like, no. Oh, anyways. Most uncomfortable outfit. Well, we might as well go down the rabbit right, hole. We're, gonna, we're a rabbit hole girls, okay? Right. So, but... Uh, one of the Super Bowls that we traveled well, was in New York. It was oh, the oh yeah, um, yes, man. So we go to New York. We win the Super Bowl. We are changing after a night of partying into that good old business suit. And I had these. We had these green, lime green glitter heels with the hand painted Seahawk oh, on them. I they never looked, bought those. They looked <laughs> great from afar, um, but they were not very comfortable. But I, I packed them. I mean, they were, you know, eye-catching and everything, but so not comfortable. So we ended up having to fly back um, in a snowstorm, basically, in that outfit. And we couldn't even leave. Like a few hours later. You're celebrating the win. All night There's long. There's like a big party that they hold. And then it's literally like, have your stuff packed before the oh, yeah. game even. Because it's just jetting off to the next thing which also included heading home right after the party right after the party so what time was this would you say like three in the morning four three four in the morning and then yeah so you change into that uncomfortable outfit and then we ended up getting stuck on the runway for hours and hours and then just it just prolonged the whole entire day and then you're flying back once we finally were able to take off so you spent i don't even know how many hours in these shoes in this outfit 
by the time I got home and I, we landed in Seattle, my feet were swollen. Mm-hmm. And I tell you that just, oh my gosh, trying to. But you can't take them off. in pain. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do? You suck it up. I was in so much freaking pain from being from my feet being swollen on the airplane but it wasn't even a few hours delay wasn't it literally like five six hours you guys were sitting on this plane deciding like trying to defrost it all that crazy stuff it was nuts well yeah i mean i've been to hong kong twice now with them and i didn't know anything about compression like tights and stuff so my feet swelled like four times their size and i'm crammed in these high heels it's horrible pain it's so red it's just so bad wow but did we say anything did we complain no because that's one of the rules don't complain yeah i know that was do not complain and don't speak about controversial topics and just grin and bear it (laughs) (laughs) but yes but anyways yeah they the your reminds, legs were crossed, like, and my legs were crossed, and my tattoo showing? was revealed, and it was like cro- uncrossed. Or, like I can see your tattoo. Figure it out. Like I don't ever. I didn't even know you had one. I don't ever want to know again. Yeah, because there were certain rules, everyone that kind of governed our appearance, right? Mm-hmm. So you couldn't ever have your tattoo showing. Mm-hmm. They were supposed to be covered with makeup at all times. She, she didn't want to see it. If you had a belly button ring, she didn't want to ever see it out. Um, Additional ear piercings, yep. nose piercing, lip piercings. All of it. All covered up. Covered up, taken out. Um, you know, little things like no hair ties on your wrists and <laughs> <laughs> clear polish on your nails, nothing bright and loud and, Mm-mm. you know, just... French tip or clear. Yep. And then just the expectation and the rules that you would always be show up with the proper makeup and, and that included look. practices. I don't think we. I think we forgot oh. to like cover that. On, on you she's not got the look. To yes, just, we did. We not really. Oh, People we didn't. don't realize, like you said, that we would just, get ready like extra glam because we're coming from our jobs. So then it would be like, okay, let's jazz it up. I'm going to practice. Like literally, we're going to sweat and work hard and work out with makeup on not full glam curls. but you could not show up to practice busted basically then no. if you didn't wear makeup at work guess what you're putting Doing that crap in on car. in the car yeah. on the way to practice because the expectation was you need to look like a cheerleader yeah and maybe, at all times at all times she didn't want people you know that are leaving vmac to see us and be like oh dang she's on the squad i mean right. she wanted it to look she wanted you to look the part which well, and her reasoning was that at any moment, Como 4 could walk in and be like, we want to do a spotlight, but that True. never happened. True. We always knew when somebody was coming in to do, like, a highlight about our team. Yeah. And maybe it would also be, like, little photo shoots. But, yeah, I think, you, like you said, we would know if there was going to be some little something that we were extra. shooting or extra for the for yeah. practice. But, but you did have to – the expectation was, you know, attractive makeup for practice. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're sweating in it, but it's also getting your skin used to like the sweat and just the built. You know how to breathe right. with makeup on while you're actually exerting same with your hair down. Skin. Like if you have long oh, hair, yeah. for the most part, you just left it down because you're not going to be wearing a ponytail on game day. Right. You better learn how to whip it out your face. Yeah, but some girls would if we had a break or practice is over. You know, girls put the hair tie on their wrist, and that was like yeah. a big, 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 big no no. Right. Right. So. I don't know. It just was like it would put the fear of God in your heart when <laughs> practice was stopped. And it was like, why do you think it's okay to have a hair thing on your wrist? Did you not see the rules? Did right. Did you not know what's expected Like, of why you? were we so scared when we got in trouble? There, it was rare that someone was like, whatever, I'll take it off. Like, what's the big deal? You know? But, I mean, we, you know, if you think about it, we should... We should have like a different expectation for a professional level of cheerleading. This isn't a high school cheerleading team. This isn't a college cheerleading team. This isn't semi-pro. So certain, maybe it was made such a big deal because it's like you guys are professionals. So I shouldn't have to say these things. Otherwise, maybe we'd be spending so much more time policing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't do this right. Or you didn't, you know, bring the right palms to practice. It's kind of like, I need to count on you guys to just know how to conduct yourselves and come look in the part, act in the part, and, and pretty much be perfect all the time. Yeah. I feel Which, like we're on a tangent right now, but even that's another thing is we had a rotation of practice outfits. Yeah. So they were always booty shorts and a bra top and sometimes a rotation of outer sweats. Like mm-hmm. we would have two or three pairs of those and then different color combinations. And if you were the girl that wore lime green on a black day, woo, 
That's happening. You are texting everybody you know if they have extras from yeah. years prior. And a lot of times they weren't the same year to year. Right. So sure, you have the right color now, but it has like lime green writing on it. And, you're and just everybody just she doesn't knows. Say anything. And it would but just that would create like a, serious panic attacks, guys. The, the rules were very important, and it might have seemed very ticky tacky. But you're trying to have like this uniform look as a squad. Sometimes you might be filming something, and for somebody to be standing out in a different color sports bra, it's just like you feel like the smallest thing on earth. Because, right. You know, or the different palms. Like it got complicated a couple years. I think it got a little more simplified. It like, did. Same color practice palms, not. You know, oh gosh, because yeah, or forgetting your boots for game day practices, oh. and yeah, you might have diarrhea for forever. Some... <laughs> That's why I was so skinny, <laughs> stressed out all but the time. A, yeah, but a lot of these rules, you know, we had to. It was just your job to stay on top of everything and always be prepared, always look the part. Um, you know, for some of the other teams, you know, we've seen some interesting rules around uh, personal hygiene, that, right? You know, and these are digging back a few years, guys. I'm assuming that they are no longer in existence, like the Buffalo Jills are no longer a team. But um, they had rules about how often women change their tampons, which is nasty. That it they, is. That they That's even had to say something. not something you should discuss with anybody. No, but I think they had to have a rule about it and just kind of literally about washing their twat and stuff. Like, just come on, man. <laughs> like, it's too much. Well, we've talked about this. We've had the, like... We've had the talks about, okay, someone's stinky a few times. Um, I don't know. It might have just been the last year, but basically, like, y'all look sick at practice. Like, can you glam it up? We weren't oh, doing enough, enough makeup. makeup. And she got a little lenient and was like, you can wear a pony. Like, you can be ready to kind of work out. Because right. practices weren't easy. You are sweating and working really hard. Right. Um, but she felt like the makeup aspect and, like, People looking present. Off. It was falling off. Well, even the idea about, and I don't know if the rules were that specific on tanning, mm. I, I would tend to oh, uh, true. Uh, I would tend See? to ignore them because I didn't tan. But, um, you know, people were looking a little on the pasty side, you right. know, at practice mm-hmm. and just maybe only doing it up for games. And I think, you know, it was... It, was, it would be pull them to the side and she would be like, hey, you need to get like some color on your skin. Yeah. One time I thought I was so smart because we had those white pants, right? Yeah. But we would get the stains from the tanning so I was like oh my gosh best idea ever I wore my scrubby sweats into the spray tan booth so that just my top part would be tan Mm -hmm. and I was like I defied like everything like I am so smart and I did it for torchlight parade because it's in the summer so it's hot like I just thought I totally mastered it and I think there was like a last minute practice called or something so I had these white chicken legs out there and then like super dark and I remember Lindsay shout out to Lindsay she was like what did you do oh my gosh like your legs are so white and the rest is so tan but I think the director was like that's a great idea everybody do it but like I did time it right so it was like I had to practice all week with white legs oh well okay but I think (laughs) if you think about like pasty legs pasty faces and not enough makeup that we could probably look like zombies especially when it's like the winter time and it's starting to get you Mm -hmm. lose color in general like in the winter and you know these practices you're cold you're trying to bundle up you're less concerned about looking cute let's just put it that way but you're still supposed to be you know thinking about how you're presenting yourself Mm -hmm. um were we allowed to eat at appearances oh gosh that was always (laughs) we had some really cool guys that worked for the seahawks that usually would be at those events and just promos in general they were very generous and wanted us to like partake if there was food there right whatever it was you know hey help yourself to some food like take a quick break whatever and I just remember being like oh my gosh I'm so hungry I'm so thirsty no thank you and they're like are you sure it actually made it more awkward that we didn't eat or drink well yeah because they're like come on man you're gonna be here for a few hours Mm -hmm. I won't tell on you like put a french fry in your mouth and it's okay right but, I remember scarfing a lot of stuff though. Like I would give in sometimes, and oh, I'd yeah. be like eating behind. I'm always a little something. piglet trying to yeah. stuff something, stuff something in my mouth. That sounds bad, <laughs> but um, but you know, but we weren't supposed to eat in uniform. I guess Mm-mm. it can look unprofessional, right? right? I mean, we're supposed to be kind of Disney princess ish ish when we are out in public. So mm-hmm. you know, unless it's something you can't like have a formal burger dinner. slopping down the side of your mouth or something, and that would be the day that you would get it on your <laughs> uniform and just look like that person that. 
is a sloppy mess. But. Or we had um, super fans, you know, that like to follow us at every event we were at and take photos of us, whether we were ready or not. Oh, yeah. So they would probably post the photo of you, like, opening, <laughs> unhinging your jaw to take a huge bite of some Chick-fil-A or something. Right. But a lot of, the, I mean, a lot of these roles did make sense in that respect, where it's just like, we have an image to maintain and uphold. And so you, you know, just have a little extra bit of polish to you. Mm-hmm. Even though you are hungry and you did want to eat a blow pipe. <laughs> and you've been working for six hours straight. Right, because you don't have time to eat. Like you, I mean, you're, if you're at work all day, unless you try to shove in a late lunch or an extra snack, but you might be doing your makeup in the car, so you can't be eating you and doing prioritize. makeup. You, you know, you got to do your lips last because you got to stuff some food in there. And <laughs> you literally have not a lot of time. You're actually changing in your car. I mean, how many yeah. times have I done that? Yeah. Thanks to nobody for peeking in there. Little but protein bars and stuff. Everybody had them in their bags yeah. for a quick bite. But yeah, you're never seen opening Eating. your mouth unless it's to <laughs> not even talk. <laughs> Just smile. Just smile. Um, Look at the baby. Look at the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've covered the, the softer rules, right? Yeah. Are we ready to... Hardcore. <laughs> Let's do it. Hair flip. Hair flip. All right. So let's let's start with social media. Okay. Because pretty controversial. Yeah. So we you know, some of the teams have individual social media accounts for the people on the squad. So you might have, you know, at Seagal Makiba on Twitter or Instagram, et cetera, Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Other teams don't allow that and it's just like the team account. Okay. Maybe they're avoiding a lot of these. So little, overarching Yeah. Like at Seagals Dolphins. only, and yes. someone directs it. Exactly. Okay. Um, but you also obviously, as you know, have your individual personal as humans, <laughs> as human beings, have your own social media account. Um, and so there were rules around what you can post on your personal social media account, mm-hmm. mainly with the idea that they were somehow protecting you from a privacy standpoint. Um, it's not that easy, or it's not that hard, excuse me, to find out who people are these days, but. The idea was that on your personal social media, you were not supposed to disclose that you were an actual cheerleader mm-hmm. for the organization. Um, they encourage you to use your team or squad accounts to promote your job as a professional cheerleader, but not on your personal social mm-hmm. media. Well, we saw this grow because when we first made it in 2011, we had no personal mm-hmm. kind of... Um, cheerleading accounts that right. we could manage ourselves absolutely not no. mm-hmm. and then I think the next thing we got was a Facebook page mm-hmm. um, that was tied it just had so many complicated rules that it almost left you like I don't even want to to use it right like, do I have to and you could um, what am I trying to say opt out of having an account if mm-hmm. you didn't want to but you had to be like following certain people that could manage and watch and mm-hmm complicated passwords so if for some You're reason you had an update, yeah you get logged <laughs> out and then you have to wait until practice but you wanted to post about you know selling calendars or something yeah i get the safety thing because honestly there's a lot of people and fans that you wouldn't want them to be like oh this is where they're gonna be at at this time like that's pretty scary yeah you know yeah it, there's a safety standpoint to it but i think the cheerleaders that get the most exposure and people can relate to the most are the ones where it's fused together. Like, okay, now you're a DCC, you're Brittany DCC, and mm-hmm. like you can post whatever you want on your personal. You can announce that. Right. You can use it as both your personal account. Right. So. And I, I mean, and I think that simplifies it to mm-hmm. have it set up that way. To, but, um, you know, I think it just became. I think everybody was tripping up on these social media rules while while I was on the team, um, just because. It's really awkward when you make the team and you're like so excited to share the news with everybody on your social, your personal social mm-hmm. media accounts before you get a team account. Um, but you're expected to kind of like take it down. And, yeah, at orientation, yeah. it was like if anybody's tagged you, congratulating you or yeah. led on to any way that you've made the team now on your personal Facebook, take it down right now. Yeah. Because I'm, you have to friend me now. Yes. Make your account private yes. and I will see. Yes. So... And it gets, you know, to be complex. Because I, well, I mean, mean, and I don't, Facebook and I are, you know, I try to get on there, but I I know I fell behind and I think I got called out for not 
for being tagged in things. And I'm just like, I can't keep monitoring mm-hmm. the tagging business. And you can set your settings to do this and do that. But it was kind of obnoxious. And then they relaxed the rules a little bit by letting us have our own accounts. But again, like you said, technical difficulties <laughs> and issues. Um, but what could you post on your, I think people flirted even when they got the social media account as a cheerleader, mm-hmm. they still would post things on their personal. And it's like, why do you, why can't you just relax and do all of that promotion? Oh, there was a big, yeah. Uh, like, like if they we wouldn't... were traveling or something, you couldn't post, like you're in Hong Kong because of the team. Yeah, so it's... you can't say on your personal, I'm in Hong Kong. And taking all these pictures and yeah, because you wouldn't have been there but for being a part of it. So they encourage you to put posts like that on your your uh, your team, che- your team yeah. account, mm-hmm. which I don't know why that was so hard for people. I don't know either. But these rules got broken so much that it was just kind of like, what's the, why Quite are Quite a we... few emails, take it down now. Um, <laughs> yeah. We which... outline this specifically, not okay. Yeah. Well, let's bring up Bailey Davis. She's, okay. a, she's the Saints, former Saints cheerleader who was um, fired from the team because she posted on her personal social media account a picture of her in a black lace lingerie looking bodysuit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, so it wasn't her team account. I don't even know if they had a team account, but. Well, we got to backtrack a little bit because okay. one of the main rules that has been in the rule book forever is that you cannot have ever right. posed semi nude or nude in the past or obviously currently when you're on the team. Right, right, right. So if you did Playboy back in the day and you audition and make it, you're automatically off. Right. Or, you know, and it didn't happen to you or somebody tried to accuse it you did. of doing something. So I think it was like the first, pra- this is my first year and the first practice after orientation, uh, she kind of announced at orientation, like, hey, I'm going to pull you each to the side. And if any of these rules aren't going to work for you, if this isn't the team for you, if you don't think you can uphold to them, Um, Or if I have found any information about you, Mm -hmm. you know, posing in the nude, I'm going to pull you to the side. So then she pulls me over to the side and I was like, oh, no, I'm in trouble. (laughs) And she had received an email that I was like stripping on a table and dancing around. And she looked into it and obviously it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. But what had happened was, is I was a go-go dancer for a casino. Oh, okay. And it was... They didn't even want us to, like, show our stomachs, so it, we were pretty covered up. But they did a promo video, which, oh, my God, I think it's on YouTube. Uh, we will not link it below. Um, <laughs> but anyways, just it was a former gal, and okay. she knew that that was a rule, and so she tried to twist it to where I would get kicked off. I see. Because my ex was her current boyfriend. See? See what see? happens? We're going to get to that rule because... Like, what the heck? That's I'm not even crazy. with that person anymore, but yeah, so. Interesting. It could even be not true. Right. But she wanted and to I think sure even, that. And even for the Bailey Davis, I think she was also being accused of being, because the Saints had mm-hmm. a rule that if you were out at a restaurant mm-hmm. and a player walked in, you were expected to leave. If you showed up somewhere and there were players there, then you were expected to leave. And I think she was also rumored, even though she denies it, that she was hanging out with players or interacting with them. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to Mm -hmm. that a little later too. But, um, but yeah. So she was kicked off the team for Mm -hmm. posting this picture, Um, and it's ironic, obviously, right? Because what she was wearing, technically, it probably matched how much skin she's showing in the uniform. Like, would you consider our uniform semi-nude? Some of them. Right. The bikini shots. Yeah. I mean, so it's debatable what was considered to be in poor taste, but they said it looked slutty and... Uh, Cutter. Just like that. But, you know, it sounds kind of like what you were saying. There was a few strikes against her. Yeah. And I took a really strong standpoint on this, on the fact that she knew the rules beforehand, but couldn't it have just been kind of a slap on the wrist, like, hey, just take that down. Right. That kind of is borderline. Like, we're not comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of extreme to kick her off now that I think about it. But maybe there was a few other things going on. But like you're saying, the double standard with the players. Like, right. So we have to always cater to them. What if you're halfway through a meal with your parents after a game 
and the players walk in, and you're like, I am not going to move. And then you get tattled on like right. I did because right. people are out to get you. I think it's ridiculous. If I'm sitting, if I'm, especially if I'm there first, like I, I just don't agree with the reach of some of their rules that were, you know, unless you go and sit at their table and just try to boo it up with them the whole night. I just think you two people can coexist in a, in a public establishment without, especially if they didn't have to do it. It was a rule only mm-hmm. for the cheerleaders that they had to be the ones to leave um, and not the other way around. So I definitely felt her complaint and, and, um, against the Saints, that it's just not fair to mm-hmm. put that responsibility and burden only on the cheerleaders. Um, and, you know, along the same lines with social media, the Saints had rules about, um, I think, the girls becoming aware of the marital status of all of the guys for some reason. They couldn't follow them on social media. If they, f- if the players chose to follow them on social media, they had to block them. It was wow. just so extra. And, like, how do you block a whole roster of, like, that starts off with 90 guys and gets down to 53, and then the roster changes throughout the year with trades and people going to the practice squad, and who has time for that? No. That's too much. We never had rules like that. No, we did not. Um, It was not, like, encouraged, but nobody – I mean, you're supposed to follow your own team. Like, on my Seagal Brittany account, I was definitely following Russell Wilson and, like, you know – why not? That seems ridiculous. It was you're all part overboard. of the same company. And, you know, you're employees, and I think that was part of the – you're all employees, and that was part of the basis of her complaint that it was gender discrimination because the guys are treated mm-hmm. one way and we're treated another, and there's are some obvious differences between cheerleaders and professional athletes, but they get to post what they want. If right. They get to post something with their shirts off. Yeah, and, working out and doing yeah. jumping jacks. Like, okay. <laughs> not that we need to be – need to – do that but I think the the rationale doesn't hold you no. know but I think um there is a line that I think sometimes people try to toe you know mm-hmm. like I know that there are rules around you know semi-nude or whatever but I'm going to post something that mm, you know mm-hmm. kind of toes the line a little bit like why go that far I don't think our team would ever eliminate a girl flat point period for any post. It would just be a conversation of like, hey, take it down. Mm -hmm. Like next time, ask me about it if you're questionable. Right. So that was kind of nice that you felt a little bit of freedom. Like, hey, I want to post this. But again, it's like so ridiculous. You should be able to know. If right. you even feel like you have to ask, just don't post it. I think Save that would be Save it for safer. the off season and when you're not auditioning. Right. It's not that hard. I just well, think it's... people want attention so much that it's like. I did three pull-ups. I'm going to take off my bra top and, you know, do the flexing, take a picture of my back. Yeah. Because yeah. one girl got in trouble for that. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that one. It was like a, you know, progress, like, workout picture where you right. have the mirror behind you and then you take a selfie, like, over your shoulder oh, okay. to show your back, you know, it's so muscular. It's muscular. Yeah. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> why do you need to put that on Instagram? I mean, and I think that's kind of a legitimate point of just, like, how far do you need to go? You're mm-hmm. already, like you said, sexy and wonderfully and beautifully made and just kind of doing You're the most. You're already a cheerleader. Like, isn't that enough? Yeah. You get a dance for thousands of people. You look gorgeous all the time. You're required to. Right. Um, you <laughs> you know? don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's the need for for what? Yeah. Just for what? You know? And let's be real. Some people do... Some women and maybe men even might do professional cheerleading with different end goals in mind mm-hmm. right maybe they're doing it for the attention and the likes and the followers and or they're trying to set themselves up for opportunities mm-hmm. after they're done so um i think bailey even mentioned some of that like she was, was tr- adding to her dance portfolio exactly photos. exactly mm-hmm. and wanting to um, not feel as restricted in what she can and can't do to promote herself because you're not allowed to i think it's even in our rules to to mention that you are a professional cheerleader for that team in promoting yourself for other things that might be similar. Like some people want to do, um, you know, audition workshops Mm -hmm. later on, but then you're actually competing with, you know, with the team that also competing. Yeah. There's a non, there's a non compete in our rules, which I think is, you know, is interesting, right? Because it is a little limiting for girls that want to do something post cheering where, Maybe you do want to share what you know and provide like audition workshops where mm-hmm. you, you know, have your own dance school and you want to teach choreography and and something that shouldn't really be viewed as competing with your former team, but there is a rule against it. I think some people got away with doing it. Maybe they got it approved, but 
Um, but I think Bailey had mentioned that she just felt like the guys were able to promote themselves however they want to, and she was trying to build her portfolio, and it's it was just lingerie and the cheerleading uniforms show more skin, and she just felt like she was slut-shamed and kicked off the team. Well, she has thousands and thousands of followers now, so. Yeah. And she's been on multiple, like, news True. things. True. So maybe she feels But she's not fulfilled. dancing. Yeah, she's not dancing. She teaches dance. Okay. Because we follow her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have covered off on a lot, and we saved the juiciest mm-hmm. one for last. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> that wonderful the role. Naughty, naughty about no fraternization with players, mm-hmm. management, and staff of the team that you... Including the mascot. Yes, that you work <laughs> for. So the only team that we saw that does not have a rule is, are the Oakland Raiders. They mm-hmm. do not have a rule that prohibits it. Some rules are stated more as, like, we strongly discourage. Right. That was our uh, rules that I have right in front of me here. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you don't get sued for <laughs> reference, like referring to these. Um, but basically it was at the disclosure or approval of the director. Oh, if at the could, discretion of the director? Yeah, discretion. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. So, um, but come on, Makiba. Let's be real. Let's be real. Truth it happens. Palms. I think it does happen, but let's let's break down because people okay. always assume that they're they're. That's just... the second number like one quit with. Second number one, <laughs> number <laughs> two the question. Second number one, <laughs> number two, you dummy. <laughs> but basically, along the lines of, do you guys get paid? It's always, do you get to hang out with the players? Yes, all so the time. So do we? Not really. No. So like, let's okay. So if you think about it, we come to practice after the players are gone. Like they're there during the day, nine to five or whenever they get there. 7 a.m., 5 a.m., mm-hmm. no time for sleep like Russell Wilson. But um, but by the time we come for practice, they're usually gone. Right. Um, so, Tuesdays they have off, yeah. which is our practice day, so they yeah. haven't even been there all day. Exactly. And then Thursday, I mean, every team is different, right, guys? But for the most part, we're not all up in there just in each other's face 24-7. Mm-hmm. Game day, we have our on-field practice um, prior to the teams coming out and warming up. Sometimes there's a few people that are warming up on the field and – you know, you might steal a little glance here or there, but I feel like the visiting team was always pretty looky lose. Oh, for sure. I mean, sure. I was looking too, but yeah, it just was. Hey, you know, you're stretching over there. I'm gonna look. I mean, yeah, I got eyes. They're not broken. I mean, <laughs> um, which team did you think was the most flirty? Ooh, that like just in general, like hey, ladies and whatever. I'm trying to think. I feel like Philly was like that, if okay. I remember correctly. And maybe it's because I think, uh-huh. even though he's not like that nice, uh, Cam Newton, I think he's very handsome. You and do? So, yeah. Okay. We, oh, no. I don't. Really? But I mean. Yeah. Cauliflower ear and all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> but I felt like, yeah, the Panthers were very like, hey. I mean, if you think about it, they're. That's probably the closest proximity is during a game yeah, when you're it's not near even the guys. Our own team. Yeah. So, yeah, there's pregame, and then, you know, we t- we're we off the field. They're practicing, they're playing, there might be. So, when you're lined up on the field in the four corners, you know, there's that's the closest that you will physically be, mm-hmm. probably, to the guys, unless you're like on a promo trip with them or doing an appearance to- together. But, like, yeah, there's, there's that little bit of interaction. And I might- don't know them. In any personal level, yeah. I mean, <laughs> unless you went there with them, but <laughs> personally, I it's like you'll do a promo or two with them. Yeah, you might um, spend a day at a hospital together right. or something like that. And so, um, their players, the players are employees, similar to how we are. And some of the things that we're tasked to do together, you're really just working together. So mm-hmm. it's not like you're hanging out and spending quality time outside right. of outside of work, but. I'm sure it's happened plenty of times where people exchange those digits and mm-hmm. DMs and whatever right. the heck people. They didn't seem to care if no, because like, you know there was no conversation like, "Oh, are you taken?" Like it was like, "Hey, so and so wants your number. Are you gonna give it to him?" And I'm like, no, "No, go away." And like I'm sure with social media and stuff that you know people have their ways the of DMs. yeah. That's I mean that's happened, right? I mean, but at the end of the day, it's a rule. The best thing you can do is not get caught, caught right? <laughs> like, I mean, the, the, because really the ramifications of it are just that 
you're the one that's in trouble, mm-hmm. not the guys. I mean, they they don't have rules that say leave the cheerleaders alone. They are off limits. Do you know that for a fact, though? I I don't. But okay, have have you heard the crazy rules though about how they basically out, like outline like, hey, don't get anybody pregnant. What? <laughs> no, I did not. Yes, somebody really? told me this that they'll they'll be like, hey guys, so like. You're going to get groupies. There's going to be girls. Oh, I think like with like, what is that? The rookie symposium maybe where they break really? all that down. Oh, I don't know. See, I don't know. But, I don't, but maybe they do. I And I think the rule around fraternization doesn't just apply to cheerleaders. I think it's like staff. All the staff. Yeah. Even the front desk yeah. admin girl. Exactly. Oh, I remember. So like Ooh. the Super Bowl year, the first Super Bowl, <laughs> I just remember going up the stairs to go back to the after party And I don't remember which player it was, but it was clearly someone that, you know, it's just the staff and Mm -hmm. the cheerleaders were there and families and friends and stuff. But I remember passing by a full on conversation where uh, there was a girl, I'm assuming she worked for the team. Mm -hmm. And the guy basically said to her, like, if you're willing to jeopardize it all, then then I'm down. Like, I literally heard that as I was, like, passing to go up the stairs. Hey, you guys just won, so. I mean. To the wind. <laughs> it was so, like, whoa, did I just really hear that? But, I mean, I think that. Was it a staff person with a player? Yeah. I, or staff on staff? I think with a player. The okay. player was basically telling her, like, if you're willing to risk your job and everything, like, I'm, I'm But down. it's exciting, right? Because, like we were saying, it's, like, forbidden fruit. Oh, yeah. It's like, here's these gorgeous athletic exactly. guys. Here's these gorgeous athletic women. And, okay, like, BMAC has some cute staff. <laughs> Do they? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, we had, yeah. But, I mean, the temptation is there. there. I think it's normal. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> Let's sign back into our Facebook. Okay, okay, what time was that? <laughs> like 50? 50, 50 Do you want, want to make a note of it or something? Sure. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It is very tempting. I mean, put it this way. I'm not going to act like I'm just like holier than now. I'm a flirt. So like when I'm dancing on the field, mostly with the visiting team, because, you know, we have this. OK, so it's my favorite part of the game. It's the last two minute warning. And we take the field and we're all on a number or in the end zone. I always love being on the numbers. But you would m- rotate around each game. And the times that I got to dance, like, on the 50-yard line, 40-yard line, right in front of the bench, like, I'm, yeah. I'm looking dead at you, and I don't care. Like, it's my fun time to just be like, look what you can't have, look at you. Unless there was a touch. double turn, and then I'm like, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I nailed it. But I thought that was just so fun. It was like a flirty, fun moment, because you, they are looking. I remember being on, like, a radio show called The Barbershop as a guest co-host or whatever, and... Um, They called in um, Golden Tate Mm -hmm. for an interview. I think it was after he was gone from the team. But anyway, um, and so, you know, they asked if I had any questions for him. And I was like, well, I'm going to ask the question the cheerleaders want to know. And I was like, so when we go on the field and we're doing our timeouts or whatever, are you guys watching us or are you paying attention to, you know, football? Football, right. And he got really quiet and he was like, nah, we watch. We watch. (laughs) But if you think about it, I mean, why wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, and I don't, I have no shame in my game. Like, I look. I look dead at you, and yeah. I'm also talking shit a little bit too. Like, we're kicking your butt. Exactly. Well, we used to. We used to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I know. We just lost today. We so. did. It was really close though. It and was. We really the Rams tried always to come have back. our number. They do. Oh, yeah. But shout out to the Rams cheerleaders, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> but anyway, I think it's a fun aspect of it. I I I think in general, like the cheerleaders are kind of viewed as untouchable, and. If you think we about- don't eat, we don't breathe, we don't speak, so <laughs> we are robots. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're like blow-up dolls. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But if, think about what it would be like if they didn't have that rule about fraternization. Well, exactly. Like, it would be drama central, I think. And that's not really our focus. Yeah. It's been stated multiple times, like when you make the team, like if you're here to find a boyfriend or be about mm-hmm. that life, like this isn't the program for you. Right. Um, we're going to get into like body image and stuff too, but that was also said like, Hey, if you can't, can't maintain, keep up with the main, you know, yeah. keep it pushing sister. But, um, what was I going with that? Well, just that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really great point, And then I started thinking about weight, um, <laughs> which is easy to throw you off your game. Yeah. But no, I mean, there are people who do, who might do it for the wrong reasons and right. if finding a man and um oh i was gonna say you know but yeah. like just drama within the team oh, and we're yeah. supposed to be close so how would 
practices go if two girls are talking to the same dude or hooked up with the same guy. Right. There's people who might be married and just the saga of... Yeah, it would get ugly. It would. And I mean, you know, there are plenty of companies that Mm -hmm. also have similar rules. Like, you will not, you know, on fraternization Mm -hmm. and within the company. Like, you just... It can kind of get ugly. There might be... It might leave room for sexual harassment type Mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, because it wasn't just the players... It was also management, and, you know, I think there's something to be said for that if mm-hmm. they think that, you know, say she that there She keeps were... making the team because yeah, she's, she's with some higher up. Yeah, some VPs mm-hmm. given, you know. I, it would be, it would, I think that rule makes a lot of sense. It does. I just think it's one that tends to be broken, but, I mean, what do you expect? Like, I just don't think, I just right. don't think you're going to regulate to the fullest extent of the law, that one, unless you're... We're human. Yeah. You know, it's going to happen. It, yeah. Let's just say... But it doesn't happen as much as people probably think. Right. There's a few people that... Like wives known. and girlfriends that regulate when you leave the games, kind of yes. like... I mean, there's... You don't want to have this... We, you know, I think we get a lot of unfair... A lot of unfair assumptions are made about the cheerleaders, and sometimes when you're doing these, mm-hmm. like, appearances with... Or the players' wives or girlfriends might be there, and they're looking at you like... Yeah, even after the game, so we yeah. have to go through their parking lot that is, like, super secure, mm-hmm. and but the elevators are right next there, and we go up to the third, our floor. fourth level. Yeah, our floor to get to our cars. Um, you know, the wives and girlfriends are definitely looking at us like, I know what you're thinking. Or, I don't know. It's, it's just a very, weird vibe. It's a weird vibe. Yeah. It's not like, hey, good game, girls. Like, you look great. Like, they actually don't even, like, pay us no mind. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like some side eye and stuff. I have my hair in a messy bun and, like, my lipstick smeared off. Like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> don't worry about it. You know, right, right. You're not leaving in, in your fancy cars. and People aren't here for your, for your man. Right. But I think the rule does kind of at least create some professional environment mm-hmm. where, you know, you just – it's just not a good look, I think, in general, to have it so blatantly obvious that it's a right. free season, free for all. I'm curious how the Raiders deal with it, though, if they mm-hmm. have issues because they don't have a rule prohibiting it. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what it's like in the NBA. I've definitely heard stories where there's a lot of fraternization going on yeah. in the NBA. Um, in Cur- not even, well, so I knew. Okay. okay. Oh. Oh. Well, so I. I um, <laughs> I know someone who played professionally in the NBA, and, and who, he mentioned that in Cleveland, for example, and this was several years ago, but just that it was not uncommon at all for them to, like, party together, go to right. pubs together, house parties, they'd be invited. Like, it was not, like, a thing mm-hmm. at all. It um, just now recently became an issue, or is oh, it just, still pretty casual I, in the I NBA? I don't I have no idea. We'll but, have to talk to an NBA dancer. Yeah, do you guys – I mean, but think about how much more contact they have in the NBA. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm really curious, because you, you're right on the – court and yeah you're dancing and popping it and I'm sure there's a lot of temptation in the same in the same way but that's not what we're there for we're no, there to no, dance no. and but you know mm-hmm. if I'm single and my eyes aren't broken I'm right. gonna look and yeah. I think that that's just natural exactly like, it'll, you know the bigger deal you make of it the more people are gonna break the rule put it yeah. that way I think right because it's even more exciting I don't yeah. know well, people fantasize about it, right? right? There's a cheerleader player. like. Every- okay, this is maybe a whole other tangent, but if you were a famous basketball player, mm-hmm. would you even have a girlfriend? If I Would I? Yeah. I mean, it's almost like when they're that young, especially, like, just be Don't single. Don't up. Just, just stay go single and spread your seed all, all over. over the... <laughs> skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> um, I just think it's so unrealistic. It right? is. Because, you know, the idea of them being monogamous is just a joke. The people who take them That's seriously are That's why we're getting the side joke. eye. I mean, yeah. just, I'm not trying to like, but, you know, insecurities yeah. because you're constantly chasing and making sure they're locked down. But Which is like, why would you kinda, even bother? Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't want that life. Me neither. That sounds stressful. Hex, yeah. But I mean, you know, they should get that out of their system. Mm-hmm. And I don't think while they're playing and it's being thrown at them from every which direction. Why do they want to do that? Why do they want to have oh, it's just cake so and easy. eat it too? Just be single. Right, just be single and like if that you have a reoccurring, you know, okay, cool. You can have but your main boo that you right, like exactly. more so than the others, but I mean Your just... bottom, the yacht. <laughs> <laughs> 
but to actually like especially if you're a player i just think it's so ridiculous yeah well that's why i'm fascinated about the subject and Mm -hmm. i'm writing my book because i'm just like do they really care about finding love probably not but Mm -hmm. what happens if they do and what does that look like you just dropped a bomb akiva you're what my book i'm writing 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 a book book. but i'm definitely flirting with all these lines of Mm -hmm. like athletes and cheerleaders i mean and just how similar our worlds are because there's a lot of overlap there and there might be a love connection but it's a forbidden one yeah so you'll have to stay tuned i need to get this stuff done (laughs) when do you think it'll be done uh by 2024 sure okay not 2024 no 2020 2020 sure okay sure got it and on that note are we ready for some locker talk and some new rules let's switch it up so are these rules outdated or should we keep them hmm i think i think they're a little crusty yeah (laughs) they need an update a refresh a little refresh crusty rules so you're a director of cheerleading for x team Mm -hmm. what are you making as a new rule well maybe to make it not such a big deal Mm -hmm. and you would know that you have maybe they got it out of their system maybe if they come back okay what i'm saying is basically Mm -hmm. if after two years on the team on the team as a cheerleader you would be free to date staff Oh. That would be a rule. Okay. So that you can, like, not their loyalty has been proven, but kind of. You put two years in. Yeah. You might not even audition again, because that's usually the average. Yeah, two, two to, to three four. years. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. What do you think? Would you change the rules about dating and just, like, free for all whenever? I probably wouldn't. Only because... Like we said, you make it at 18, yeah. and you have some player, like, aggressively trying to get at you and you just give it up because you don't know any better oh my gosh you know what I mean? it's just not all hot. about like love and dating yeah and then you're having to try to as a director probably like coach girls like hey girl when he tries to go after you it's not necessarily like a compliment right. like he might and just, then you, you know do a promo I mean? with him and it's awkward yeah, because i smashed and he and tooted and, and booted yes and he's on to the next and you feel crunchy inside right. just too much to try to yeah so i probably wouldn't but would i would change the age, age limit i would change the age okay 21. 25. Wow. Well, really? Maybe that is a little old. But uh, yeah, it kind of. 25 is old? Well, not old. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I mean, when you think but about later it, in your later dance in, career. Yeah. Because just like players, like supposedly quote unquote dancers don't have that long of a career, That's which true. I think is ridiculous and people are right. totally proving that wrong. But right. it's kind of true. But I think that, you know, from a professional cheerleading standpoint, I think it is starting to skew a little young Mm -hmm. I mean like I said I kind of do believe at least in the levels of it there's you know high school there's college and there should be this standard of professional cheerleading that you're grown women Mm -hmm. and there's a maturity level that I would expect I think a lot of these rules would become a lot easier depending on the age range that you're talking about so maybe not 25 but I would it would 21. definitely be 21 at a minimum. Or even 22, cause so that way, right out yeah. of college. Well, you you know, that first year, 21, you're, you know, you're probably doing too much. So maybe you yeah. need a year after that when you've gotten all that out of your system, right? To, and you know how to handle a professional job. Mm-hmm. So that would be one rule. Up the, right. up the age. Yeah, I Not agree. where you have, like, you know, two Well, this old. sounds mean, but then the women should at that time kind of have more of an interesting... Life? Life and things to bring to the table and things that they're passionate about even yeah because you're just still finding yourself I think I I kind of I just like that idea and we'll get to the body um, image Mm -hmm. episode um, next actually but I think you'll you'll be a little bit more settled as a woman Mm -hmm. if you're a little older as well so that would be a rule that would be one of my that's a good one I think age yeah because you're tenor like is that the right word Tenure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I went through college. I promise. Um, it shouldn't really matter because, yeah, what if it should be an age requirement? Yeah. I like that. A little bit more mature. Okay. All right. What, what about? Um, so the the appearance is very strict, right? It is. So would you like is. a little more flexibility with that? Yeah. I mean, not to where we're looking kind of. WWE or something. Right. <laughs> a little crazy. Not a little too crazy, but I just got a nose ring when I went mm-hmm. on to your bachelorette party slash girls trip. 
crazy idea and it hurt like hell, but I it love it. Cute. Thank yeah. you. Um, I would be really, really disappointed if I had to remove it. Mm -hmm. And it closed. And it closed. Oh my gosh, because then it would be over. I'm not doing that again to myself. That was painful. But I think it kind of fits me. And I would say that, why can't I keep it in? Right. Like, I like it. <laughs> it's not like a ton of piercings or right. something very alternative. Or a tongue piercing while you're like Some making... of the players have their nose pierced. Right. I just think that one's a little... Mm -hmm. But maybe not so much belly button. Really? I mean, is that college-y to you? I think a it's college. Bit. Yeah. I could see that one just being like, okay, we're over that mm -hmm. phase. Um, what about tattoos? Would you let people show tattoos? Maybe that could be up to the director to... You're the director. What do you say? Um, I'll have to check them out and make sure that they're appropriate. Not a tramp stamp? Not a tramp stamp or some guy's name or Showing something. On your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no paw prints on the cleavage or anything. But like you have some really cute, subtle tattoos that you've had to hide. Yeah. One's um, center, right? Yeah, right in the top of my abs. I kind of, when I got them, and one at the top of my right thigh. But I, when I got them, I wanted it to be in an area where, like, if somebody was lucky enough to see it, it was because you, you lucky see me you. in my, <laughs> yeah. see me in my bra and panties, basically, or a bikini or something like that. That was my rationale. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, for some of the, gosh, especially the booty shorts for practice. Okay, trying to cover the tattoo on my on my thigh. Yeah, was the not, booty shorts rolled up, so oh it was kind of like rookie year. I think I just stressed myself out so much because I tried band aids, but then you're sweating and they come off. I tried makeup, but then it rubs off because mm -hmm. it's just it wasn't that easy at all. But like your tattoos, I think are are great. You know, Thanks, they're so. And I got my tattoo on my foot while I was a cheerleader, so I knew to like try to get it in a place that yeah. we're never barefoot except for calendar shoots, which right. I covered up right. really well, except that one trip. <laughs> <laughs> well you aren't thinking about it right. especially traveling but yeah maybe maybe if they're tasteful enough mm -hmm. um, I think we just have this so squeaky clean image that sometimes it's a little it's it just of mutes boring. everybody and makes everybody look a little bit right. too much but kind of like what Mickey was saying last episode about like classic makeup for brides Yeah, you don't want to look back 20 years from now and you're showing, I don't know, your grandchildren. Wait, what? Right. <laughs> you just don't want to be showing people and being like, why did I have bright green hair? Right. You know, or all these tattoos and piercings. It's kind of like they want it to be timeless, timeless. I and could classic see that. look. I could see that. Maybe um, too much self-expression and trendy things would be a little. get out of hand. Yeah. But, you know, I feel like the NBA dancers get a lot more leeway with this. Like They, they do. Didn't you say there's there's a girl out there with cute purple yeah, hair? Yeah, she has bright like fluorescent and like the neon colored hair is really popular right now. But she has bright purple hair. I need to find her name so we can tag her. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so cute. And I even commented on her photo and was like, they allowed this because it was just so shocking yeah. to see like such a bold hair color. She dances for the wizards, and she was like, it was actually their idea. Like they really um, encourage personality, but. It's not like five girls on the team have crazy hair. That's like true. I think she's the one and only. Well, then their their squads are a lot smaller too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're having a squad of like forty girl women or, you know, thirty between somewhere between thirty and forty, like maybe you do want more of a uniform, subtle look as opposed to a squad of like sixteen. I don't really know how many are in NBA squads, right. but maybe you can have one person stand out a lot because you're trying to create. 16 to 20 like distinct looks and so maybe you can have more more wiggle room but mm -hmm. I think it makes it more fun interesting to more look relatable at yeah just being yourself right like, right and not so miss America all the time yeah well because there are times there are moments in games you guys where you're just so caught up in the moment mm -hmm. and you know you really want to let yourself let your hair down and just kind of go a little nuts with it and Sometimes that was frowned upon. Frowned upon. Mm -hmm. Like we can't even. So we play like <laughs> the few times that we get to hear hip hop, and these poor DJs just play the same dang on songs into the ground. Rick Ross and yeah, we but them boys. Yeah, but you know, for kickoff or different things, they're playing this hip hop, and we have these. Well, now they're not high heels anymore, but <laughs> you have these high heel boots on, and you're really just like feeling it. And you're wanting to like go a little crazy. Right. Shout out to Natalie. I danced next to her one year, and she was just so fun. And we probably were the ones that were overdoing it, okay? Because Getting us in trouble. <laughs> probably. But it was so fun because we just kind of like Me let too. loose, and it was just a chance to show your personality and like get into it and really feel the music. And then it turned into like, just step a clap. Certain type of step clap, and you really could not go hard in the paint. 
she's like, I don't want to see a bunch of like action up top. And it just felt really sterile. Yeah. And wah, 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 wah. Right. Well, when we went to the Super Bowl, so the year you guys won, mm-hmm. I was not on the team. So then the second year, like this is totally unheard of, we were going again. Right. That game was insane against Green Bay. And I don't think there was confetti yet. Was there confetti? There was confetti. There was confetti. Yeah. And um, Sun Rose, she's like half my size, itty bitty lady. And uh, I was just so excited to be going to the Super Bowl. I mean, of course, she like ran up to me and jumped in my arms like we just were newlyweds. And I swung her around. <laughs> and I just was like, woohoo! Like it was probably like a two second thing. I didn't yeah. care, man. Yeah. We were going to the Super Bowl. Got in trouble about that. Yeah. Please do not like overly celebrate or something like one girl made a confetti angel Mm -hmm. oh yeah it's like (laughs) these are the things that we should be like allowed to do and i get that you're supposed to celebrate with fans but Mm -hmm. we are we're a team like we should have moments of like so i think i hugged jolanda shout out to jay i mean there's moments where you're just so caught up in the game like we were pulling off crazy miracles that Mm -hmm. game if you remember too like so you get lost and it just shows like we really love our Seahawks. And we love and each other. Yeah, yeah, we love each other. And yes, you party with the fans. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. So I'm just going to say it because you re- reminded me of it. But that game, since we are playing Green Bay on Thursday Night Football, oh. God bless them. Um, but that was a game that there were a lot of fans leaving. I'm calling out some That's of the 12s. Right. And I was in the northwest corner of the stadium at CenturyLink. And I could see everywhere else that people were leaving. But mm-hmm. the fans that were in my corner were stayed. staying. And I swear. They stayed like, for you. Did they stay for me? <laughs> yes, they did. But it was just so like, man, in that moment, I just wanted to party with the fans so hard because they like stayed till the very, very end. And I heard people were trying to come back into that game. They and were. They were could not enter the building and they should not have been allowed to but don't be leaving yeah like we we need you more than ever at the end exactly just stay you just, paid for the ticket this and this could very uh, well be their last game like stay right but um anyway that just sent me on a tangent but i like feeling like i was connected with the fans i mm-hmm. like feeling like i'm connected with my girls if we're dancing and we're making eye contact and we're having a little fun that's part of it. Like right. we should, I think we should relax a little bit on just mm-hmm. the prim and perfect all the time rule. Just having more of a personality, and if you're going cuckoo crazy and look like not cute, yeah. As a director, I would pull you to the side and be like, "I love your enthusiasm, but tone it down." You know, like <laughs> take it down. Notch. Right. Yeah, I think that's tasteful. Mm-hmm. But you want to have some life. I just think sometimes you just try so they hard to say regulate. That about us. Yeah. Like, oh, you guys just stand there and, like, watch the game. It's like, well, yeah, we do on offense. Right. You're supposed to be quiet, too. Right. Chillax. Right. I hate when people scream during offense. Like, yeah. cut it out. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. We've covered our new rules. Yes, we have. So, again, make sure you guys submit your stories, comments, rate us, reviews, all that good stuff. Yes. Um, we want to collect some awesome anonymous stories for hotline bling (laughs) so send them our way yes indeed so don't forget to follow us on our new facebook now is live exactly like our facebook page follow us on twitter okay so i know that twitter's maybe losing some of its pizzazz but i'm putting out my little desperado plea for people to follow us on twitter too so i kind of man twitter Brittany man's instagram I feel like I'm tweeting to myself, and I'm actually entering into lots of controversial arguments about cheerleaders mm-hmm. because I have no one else to talk to. So <laughs> follow you us do on post Twitter. Good stuff. Oh, follow us on Twitter, but it's fun. It we is. like to interact with you guys, and thank you so much for listening. Yeah, see you next week. Until next time, keep your eyes on the sidelines. Woo-hoo. Bye, bye, <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>